So how would you describe yourself as a preacher mm. in terms of your preaching style? Would you say that you are expository or narrative? Or mm -hmm. Let me back up to the Fred Sampson story and then go, go forward. I wrestled with my preaching style a long time and still sort of kind of do wrestle. And so um, Fred Sampson, uh, contracted cancer mm -hmm. and it went in remission and came back and Frida his daughter uh, called me on the phone and said Frank if you want to see him you better come see him so I flew to Detroit and I, I stayed a week uh, Carolyn Knight came because this was gonna be it Friday night they had a celebration of his ministry and he was putting his tie on to come and he got sick and they took him to the hospital. He didn't even come. Right. Charles G. Adams preached that thing tonight, the whole community celebrating, you know. So I had to preach Saturday night at New Faith because we had a Saturday night service. And so I went to the hospital to see him and I, I, I flew home and I knew that this was the last time I was gonna see him on this side. I knew that. Mm -hmm. So I said, Doc, I, I need to say to you a few things. Thank you, did all of that. And I said, I'm wrestling with my preaching style. I said, I'm not loud. I don't sing. I don't have a big finish. And you know, this is like, you know, this is like 19, I mean, this is, this is late, I've been preaching I started pastoring in 1982, so I'm, right. talking, I'm talking about 17 years. I'm talking about like, you know, I'm just starting, I'm a pastor. I'm, right. I'm talking about deep into my, I'm still struggling. Right. Church is growing, you know, I mean, people invite me, I mean, I'm, I'm still struggling because I, I can't preach like this or like that. I can't, I can't close hard, you know, I don't leave them running and shouting and all that. So when I got through with all that, he said, um, uh, what fourth did they go out to the desert to see? And I didn't understand. He said, a man dressed in fine clothes, mm -hmm. a reed swayed by the wind. He said, um, that's not what, no. He said, they go to see a prophet mm -hmm. and thou art a prophet indeed. Mm -hmm. He said, go home and look at that up in Luke. <laughs> so, and uh, I went home and looked that thing up and so um, that was one of the critical moments to help me accept mm -hmm. my style. And that's a strange thing to say 17 or 18 years in, but yes. that, it is what it is, right? Right. So I think that I'm a narrative preacher, though uh, I am helping a PhD student out at Fuller. He did an independent study with me on contemplative preaching. Mm. And as I read his paper, um, we did a piece on contemplative preaching for um, Preaching with Sacred Fire, Martha Simmons and I for the, the anthology of African American preaching. And I always considered myself in that category, but I, and I, I, I did some initial work in thinking about it. But when I read his paper, I began to identify myself more and more as a contemplative preacher. And so what is a contemplative preacher? Well. I like depth, that's not that, anybody else don't like depth, but mm -hmm. you know, Howard Thurman had that, that depth. Sometimes you gotta listen more than you can say amen because mm -hmm. you know, it's deeply interior. Um, Clyde Copeland says she's an interiorist. Right. You know, it goes deep. It's, sometimes it's quiet, sometimes it's, uh, so the way that I characterize it is, um, I'm gonna tell another story if you, you know. Um, as a part of my growing up, my father was a jazz musician and he would play saxophone. And they had a, something called music minus one. So it'd be a whole orchestra minus one instrument. Mm -hmm. And then he would, so I grew up underneath me, 
hearing um, jazz music and mm -hmm. you think a full ensemble was down there, you know. And so I could hear John Coltrane, I could hear it. And uh, I remember I, I said, Dad, it sounds like noise. I can't make, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just, this is just noise. It's, I mean, what, what's the, uh, am I missing something? So he said, <clears throat> Coltrane is playing ideas. Mm. And when you get old enough, you'll be able to hear the ideas behind the sound. Well, you know, you store that up. And uh, I got married and I was going through some old LPs that my father had. And here was Giant Steps, John Coltrane. So I got it, played it, and I heard it. Mm. I heard the ideas behind the sound. Years later. Years later. So my father comes to hear me preach, right? I'm in Memphis now, this is after 2000. I went to Memphis in 1999, drove down, spent some time, hear me preach. And he said to me, um, after hearing me, he said, you're playing ideas. Mm. That meant the world to me. So you, you, you're, playing, you're playing ideas. So what I hear is ideas. I, I think that many preachers hear, hear rhythm and hear cadence. I hear ideas. Now, I think ideas are deeply emotional. I don't think that. Right. And sometimes the emotion is not in the rhythm and the cadence, though it can be, you know. See, for me personally, I have to have my organist put me where I need to be. So when I at Mississippi Boulevard, I was, you know, I had or regular organists, he could right. put me there. It's hard for me to go there by myself. Some people can go there by themselves, I need no organist, right. right? Right, I need no organist, right? right. And when, I, when you're preaching with different places, the organists right. don't know you and you don't know the right. organists, right? right. So, right. You're in trouble. You're in trouble, right? So that, look, look, just stop it, right? Because right. I'm, I'm about to mess up, you're about to mess me up, right? right? So when I come down, I hear ideas. I hear deeply emotive ideas and I, I transfer those ideas. In, in some rhythm and in some cadence, I have sermons that that happens, but it's with the right organist. So when I say contemplative preaching, I think that's what I mean. So I think that I am a, a contemplative preacher, sometimes narrative, sometimes expository. Mm -hmm. But this whole sense of, um, of quiet and so things that are important in contemplative preaching is uh, vocal tone, and it's important, that's everybody, but voice inflection, how do you convey emotion uh, in your tones, in your feelings. Uh, so what happens to me is a fraction of a second before I say what I'm going to say, the emotion hits me, then the tone follows the emotion. Mm. So we don't have, we don't do much work in our traditional contemplative preaching yet. This young man, his name is Trey Clark, I'm working with him and so we hope to, he'll do his dissertation on con contemplative preaching, hopefully a book on contemplative preaching. Mm -hmm. And we have contemplative preachers, Howard Thurman right. is, a, is a contemplative preacher. Uh, and he did a paper on James Massey. Mm -hmm. you know, we, have, we have a tradition uh, uh, um, in the anthology, we label some of these people, men and women. Um, I think it's Barbara Harris, uh, mm -hmm. contemplative preachers, but our tradition generally is the more demonstrative aspects right. of, our, of our tradition, uh, which, are, which is okay, but I think uh, coming up, we're gonna begin to lift these contemplative preachers. So that was a long way around, but mm -hmm. I've been, you see, I've been thinking about that. Right. I, you know, I've been I'm just giving you what, I, what I've been thinking about. Right.